going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today I am super excited because we're going to be taking a look at a very powerful single board computer that was just released from a company known as Friendly Elect. Some of you may be familiar with the company I've actually been dealing with them for a couple years now and uh, when it comes to this new board the reason I'm really excited about it is the price and performance. This is known as the NanoPi R6C and for the base model with 4 gigabytes of RAM it's $85 or you can opt to get this full aluminum case with it for 100 bucks. Now when it comes to single board computers, uh, prices are kind of skyrocketing and it's really hard to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi 4 right now. But with this, it's actually coming in at the same retail price and it offers three times the performance that the Raspberry Pi 4 puts out. And real quick, just to give you a size comparison here, Raspberry Pi 4 versus the NanoPi R6C. And remember, the NanoPi is already in that aluminum case. You can opt for just a bare board if you want to and then add a cooler later on and you'll get that a little cheaper up front. So taking a look at the overall unit, up front here we do have some status LEDs, we've got four of them. Over here on the right hand side we've got our mask button which will put us kind of into a U-boot mode, that way we can flash the internal eMMC storage. But remember, this does support an NVMe SSD, a 2280 actually fits in the bottom of this unit. You can also boot from a micro SD card or opt for the model that comes with 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage already on the board. Taking a look around back here from the left to the right, we've got our USB Type-C power input. Now this does support PD charging, so it's got a wide input range from 5 volts up to 19. Full-size HDMI 2.0 port. We've got two Ethernet ports here. One is a 2.5 gig, the other is just gig Ethernet, but it's really nice to see dual Ethernet on a board like this. And finally, we've got one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0 port, and an extra USB Type-C. Now one thing I really love about these new boards coming out is the fact that we can add an NVMe drive. This is actually only running at PCIe X1, but it's going to be a lot faster than a micro SD card. But like I mentioned, they do offer a model with 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage already on the board. That's what I've got here, and I'm actually going to be utilizing the operating system that came pre-installed, but I got another video planned. We're going to do a full Ubuntu video from that NVMe, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. So the aluminum case that they do offer with this kind of blocks off some of the I.O. we have because uh, this actually does have 30 GPIO pins and we've got an RTC battery connector in here. And if you did end up just buying the bare board, you could always pick up a heatsink and fan combo from Amazon for pretty cheap. I would just go with a little sticky back heatsink and fan combo like you find for the Raspberry Pi 4s all over the place. You can get them for real cheap. It will keep this CPU nice and chilly. When it comes to the specs of the NanoPi R6C, for the CPU we've got the Rockchip RK3588S. This is an 8-core ARM SoC with 4 A76 cores up to 2.4 GHz and 4 A55 cores up to 1.8. Graphics are handled by Mali G610 MP4 GPU. You can opt for either 4 or 8 GB of RAM with this board. And again, you can also opt for built-in eMMC storage, but we've also got a micro SD card slot and that NVMe M.2 slot inside so we can run our operating systems from it. And speaking of operating systems, I mean, right now out of the box, they've got friendly WRT 22.03, Android 12 tablet version, Android 12 TV version, friendly core light 20.04, Debian 10, Debian 11, and Ubuntu 2204 desktop with the GNOME interface. So upon initial release, we've already got a lot of operating systems that we can use on this board. Plus, there are some community images posted over on the wiki, but uh, right out of the box, this actually came with the Android 12 tablet version. That's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. Later on, we can test out Debian or Ubuntu. I believe there's an Arch build somewhere, so let me know what you want to see in the comments below. I will be swapping over to my game capture device in just a second so we can get a better look at everything, but I wanted to give you a look at the interface itself. I mean, we've got basically stock Android 12 here, and it does come pre-installed with Google Play, so we don't have to worry about sideloading anything. We can access everything we need from there. I've already installed a bunch of games and emulators we're going to be testing along with some benchmarks, but uh, heading into IDA64, as you can see, we've got that NanoPi. Now it's listed as a different board, but this is definitely the RC6 the RK3588, and that Mali G610 GPU. The first thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback from YouTube. Now this chip is actually capable of 8K, but I personally don't have an 8K display to test it with. But I figured taking a look at some 4K 60fps HDR video playback would be good enough here. Let me make sure we're at 4K. Advanced here. Also want to turn on Stats for Nerds. Yeah. 
and we've done some testing with this same chip in the past. Uh, some of these are a bit hit or miss when it comes to 4K. It really comes down to the operating system you're using. And keep in mind, you know, for like 8K video playback, you're going to use the built-in rock chip player, which comes on a lot of these operating systems. That's definitely kind of optimized to play this content back a little better. But streaming 4K from YouTube is looking great here, and you know, I figured it would be. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was run a few benchmarks, and unfortunately I couldn't get Geekbench 6 to finish up. I could sideload Geekbench 5, but uh, I just went with Antutu and 3D Mark. With 3D Mark, we ran Wildlife, which is a Vulcan benchmark for the built-in GPU here. And with this, we got a total score of 4,454. Looking good. This is definitely on par with other RK3588 chips that we've tested. Really great GPU performance for a single board computer. And the next one I ran was Antutu. And with this, we got a total score of 645,019. This chip here is really on par with something like the Snapdragon 865, and in Linux distros that I've been testing out recently with the Panfork GPU drivers, we're seeing GPU performance on par with the 865. So when it comes to single board computers, we've got a powerful little system here. So now I figured I'd go ahead and jump into some native Android gaming, then we'll move over to some emulation and wrap this one up. In my next video with this board, we will be taking a look at a Linux distro. Let me know in the comments below what you want to see running on this. We've got Ubuntu, and I believe there's an Arch or an Armbian version that we can install on this unit. Obviously, we're starting off pretty light here with Minecraft, but this is still a very popular game on Android, and uh, it's really, really smooth. This is definitely running at 60 FPS. Fancy graphics is on, and we're at 12 chunks here. We could probably go up with it if we want to, but it uh, looks really great here. Very smooth frame rate, and overall, Minecraft is going to run fine on this board. Next up, we've got Asphalt 9, and by the way, I am using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I've got an adapter, I'll leave a link to it in the description. It actually has Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.3 built in, so you just need that one port to use one dongle with it. But yeah, this is also performing really well, so we'll uh, take it up a bit. Call of Duty Mobile. We're at medium settings, and the frame rate is set to extreme. I'm pretty sure we are running at 60 FPS. I really wish there was an easier way to kind of see an on-screen frame rate here. But this is another one of those games that I've really never had issues with on the arcade 3588. And by the way, if you did want to play Genshin Impact, it does run. You can go with a low medium mix, but unfortunately, as a lot of us already know on Android, we don't have controller support unless we use a third party mapper. And personally, I didn't really feel like setting it up. So obviously, we're getting some great performance with native Android games. Now it's time to move over to some emulation. And first in the list, we've got some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. We're at 1280 by 960, so we do have an upscale going. Looking great. Sonic Adventure 2. Not a super hard game to emulate, but it is one that kind of gives lower-end chips a run for its money. This one's running at 60 FPS. Got that frame counter in the top left-hand corner. The RK3588 does handle PSP really well, even the harder to emulate games. Like God of War, you want to do Ghost of Sparta or Chains of Olympus at 2x with the Vulcan back in, you're going to get a 60 FPS frame rate. No frame skip is needed here. I don't even need any hacks on. And just seeing how well this runs, when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, we can go up to 4 and 5x. Something like uh, Tekken 6, which is kind of a mid-range game, 4x, 60 FPS all day on this chip. With the newer development versions of the Dolphin emulator, we've been getting a lot better performance on the RK3588. Here's Time Splitters 2. Now, I will admit that, you know, trying to run something like F-Zero GX is still out of the question on this thing. But if you wanted to play games like Sunshine, Wind Waker, or obviously Time Splitters 2, then it's going to run them at full speed. There's actually quite a few GameCube games that this thing will run really well. And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2. We're at 2x resolution using the Vulcan back in. Gran Turismo 4 running at 60. Something like God of War 2 does need to be dropped down to 1x resolution, but it can do it with that Vulcan back in. And the easier to emulate stuff like Crash Bandicoot, 4x on this thing. Heading over to their website, you can see that the 4GB bare board here is $85. With a case, it's $110. Or you can go up to the 8GB bare board for $120. And uh, the 8GB with the case is $125. 
125 might sound like a lot, but if you take a look at Raspberry Pi 4 prices right now, you'll be pleasantly surprised at what this costs due to all the scalpers out there. And overall, I do think it's a great little board. I mean, you can turn this into a full-fledged mini PC running Ubuntu with the GNOME desktop. I've done a few videos in the past, and you could definitely get by using it as your everyday PC. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. Stay tuned to the channel because we will be doing some Linux testing here shortly. I will have that video posted. But until then, if there's anything else you want to see running, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more or maybe picking one of these up, link for their website is in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.